I am purpose driven. It's not personal. It's purpose. When you see me, there is deeper than what meets the eye. There is a soul, a spirit, a divine purpose. Join me Thursdays at 10 a.m. Finding Happy on UNE Radio. Thursdays at 10 a.m. Good morning. So we're going to be walking this morning. So let's walk and talk. Good morning, good morning, good morning. All right, let's speed this up just a little bit. Though. Let's start off slow. Okay, good morning, good morning. I am Coach Raquel. And I'm doing this a little bit different. Yes, so I, this is what I call let's walk and talk. Yes, so I'm currently on the treadmill. It's going a little slow, so I'm going to put it I'll just up a little bit. A little bit. But I like to start out a little slow you know so it's not too much for me yeah so we're just walking we're not overdoing it we're just walking so good morning or rather grand rising everyone grand rising um i hope you woke up today feeling very well i um one moment i'm on the treadmill but I need to set it properly. I'm still getting used to, I'm still getting used to it, you know? I'm still getting used to doing this. So I'm adjusting my speed. All right, I think we're where I want to be. There we go. All right. There we go. There we go. So, Grand Rising, everyone. <laughs> I'm Coach Raquel. And this is Let's Walk and Talk. Finding Happy. It's all about finding happy. So, this morning, I'm just going to be walking for 10 minutes and speaking with you. And today... I want to talk about um, protecting your peace. Sorry. I want to talk about protecting your peace and trusting the process, you know? Um, I'm someone who, growing up, I, I, I missed out on the affections of a mother. Um, I didn't really have my mom around. And so the nurturing, the guidance, the protecting I was supposed to get, I didn't really get it. And then I had my dad spotting throughout my years, you know. There are times when he was physically there. There are times when he was not able to be physically there. But I always knew or rather have access to him. I always knew he was available to me, you know? At least that's how I felt as a kid. My mother, I didn't feel like she was available to me or I had access to her growing up. So 
I kind of grew up in a very um, self-sustaining kind of way. I grew up having to rely upon myself, right? Because I didn't feel like there was safety in others for me. So trusting and relying upon others for me has always been a challenging thing. But as I've grown older, especially in more recent years, I learned and realized that people were always there for me. Um, some of them I call kind strangers. I think because I'm a part of a world that says you have a mother and you have a father and they're called parents, right? So these persons who God used as a vessel to bring us here, the world then conditions us that they're called mothers and fathers. And if they're your mother and father, then they're your parents. And if they're your parents, then they have a responsibility and, a, and an accountability for you and that they're supposed to protect, provide, nurture, teach. You know, they're supposed to support you, be there for you and everything. But what about those parents who don't have the capacity or in cases where they were just used as a vessel to bring you here and that was their job. I believe that was my mom's job. And I do believe she loves me. And I know actually she loved me by the things she did. But I didn't really see value in the things she did because she didn't do it the way I was taught it was supposed to be done. I'm still talking about finding and protecting your peace and trust in the process. So, because my mother didn't do it the right way, at 16 years old, I hated her. Oh my gosh, I wanted to divorce her. And um, after that, years later, closer to her passing, um, I started praying about her because I didn't have a feeling. I was so, it, all I felt for her was indifference and apathy. I didn't feel good, I didn't feel bad. I remember when she passed, I didn't feel happy, I didn't feel sad. I was empty. And God gave me, I think it's 1 Corinthians 13 for her, what love is. I wanted to share it at her funeral, but I didn't get a chance, and that's okay. But God gave me that for her. And God kind of started teaching me that she couldn't love me because she herself wasn't loved. And so over, over the past 10 or so years, I've just been learning the what is peace and the value of peace. And to find peace, we have to gain understanding. At least I had to. I, there are five things I had to gain or do in order for me to find my peace. And one was understanding not just understanding of myself, but understanding of others, understanding of God, understanding of life to a degree. <laughs> I won't say I fully understand life, but I had to gain some understanding for myself, you know, in order for me to get to a place of peace. I had to gain understanding Understanding when people speak. Understanding when someone's going through something. Understanding. Comprehension. I don't even like the word understanding. I had to gain comprehension. Understand. Well, whatever. Words. <laughs> I just had to process things in a way that gave me insight. The second thing I learned that I had to have in order, to, I had to gain in order to find my peace was forgiveness. And for years, I thought it was forgiving my mom, forgiving my dad, forgive the people who hurt me, forgive everyone else. For years, that's what I thought it was. 
until this year, between last year and this year, 2021 and 2022, <laughs> I realized that the person I needed to forgive was myself. I had to gain forgiveness. I had to gain forgiveness of self. Because you see, I had blamed myself for everything that happened to me because I felt that I allowed them to happen. That's how I felt. I felt like when I got raped, I put myself in the circumstance for that to happen to me. I felt that when I was abandoned, I must have just been a bad child. I caused that to happen to me too. When I was neglected, I was just too difficult. So it was my fault, you know? And I would cry days and nights begging God, could you make me a better person? Why wouldn't people love me? What am I projecting? That's causing people to neglect and reject me. So I had to do a lot of work in forgiving myself for that. Whether or not it was my fault, I held myself accountable. And so I had to offer myself some forgiveness. So I had to gain forgiveness. And after, as I learned to forgive me, I find it easier to forgive others because I realized that I didn't intend to hurt me. But yes, I've made some bad choices. The same for other people. They're not even thinking about you, to be honest, I think. They're not even thinking about me. They're busy trying to survive. <laughs> I'm collateral damage. <laughs> so I forget, forgive them because no matter how intentional it may seem that someone is trying to um, scheme to hurt you, they're, trying, they're scheming to survive and, and we become collateral damage, you know? So I had to gain comprehension or understanding, and I had to gain forgiveness, especially self, forgive, forgiving self, right? No, the third thing I had to gain to find my peace, oh, whew, the third thing I had to gain to find my peace was self-love. Hmm. And I'm on that journey right now. I'm on the journey of loving myself and a part of loving myself <laughs> was accepting me looking in the mirror not just at my body but at my face because for a long time I first I didn't like myself because I was too skinny I, I just didn't think I was to fit in a skinny body and well it wasn't really just that I didn't think I fit in a skinny body because my, my elbows and my knees were big and had extra skin, <laughs> you know? But more importantly, I knew that my skinny was as a result of malnutrition. I knew that my skinny was as a result of me not being fed or being underfed. I was very malnourished growing up. Even when I was in college, I hated looking at myself because I... I all I saw when I looked at myself was hunger. And not hunger because I want my tummy to be full, but malnourished, not feeling nourished, you know? You know you're eating and just constantly eating things that don't satisfy you. That does not make your body feel blessed. You know, you're eating just because you want to overcome a hunger, the hunger that you feel. Not necessarily eating because you're nourishing your body or healing your body, you know? So I had to learn to love myself in whatever skin or size or color or whatever, whatever hairstyle it was, not my body. I'm not talking about loving my body. Me, the person, the thinker, the one who felt abandoned, the one who finds it difficult to trust people, the one who feels like people are letting her down you know, and blaming herself for it. I had to forgive that girl so I could love her. And then when my mom was in the hospital, 
and I went to see her, I I bathed, bathed her, tidied her, and revelation, <laughs> she looked exactly like me. I mean, her vagina looked like mine. Her thighs looked like mine. Her tummy looked like mine. I felt like she, looking at her, showed me my future. But worst, looking at her, showed me what I looked like. And what I looked like was angry. What I looked like hated me. What I looked like didn't accept me. And so in 2020, I remember <laughs> going on a, a mirror campaign where I would look in the mirror days and days trying to love myself, but I had not yet mastered loving my mom. So I couldn't love myself because I looked too much like her. And all I would remember are the bad things when she slapped me across my face, when she, you know, that's all I could remember. So I had to get to a place of forgiving her, learning and understanding her, because I was never told her story. So I had to take what information I had of her, what experiences I had with her, and I had to take that and use that to forgive her, right? And then I had to learn to love her. I couldn't love myself without loving her. And that's why God gave me 1 Corinthians 13. I think that's the chapter on love. Love is patient, love is kind, you know? And nowhere in that did I hear it says, love is accepting other people. Love is, if you have a child, you have to stay with it. Love is simpler than that, because God knows our capacity. And God knows my mom did not have the capacity beyond what she did. She gave everything she had, and I grew to love her. And now I'm loving me again. I'm loving me. So I had to learn, understand, learn, I had to gain understanding. I had to gain forgiveness, and I had to gain self-love in order to find my peace. <laughs> <clears throat> the next thing I had to gain in order to find my peace was self-care. Well, I've always been taking care of myself. Whether or not I've done a good job over the years, I don't know. But I've always been doing it. And one of the things I've been doing since I was a teenager is walking. I loved walking. I loved getting up early in the morning, touching nature, and... I had this habit where I would go into nature and I would touch nature while I pray. I don't know, for some reason it told me that it was more connecting. <laughs> I felt more connected. And so I would touch the trees. I would go to the ocean and stand on the sand barefooted. And I've, I've been like walking down the hill and up the hill since teenage years, you know, when I used to visit my mother and stuff. And something major happened in my life 2016 and I stopped I stopped walking I lost myself um, I got so scared of people I wouldn't leave the house and when I tried leaving the house I would just break down at the door curled up in a fetal position in a corner just crying I would cry so hard that sometimes I don't know how long I'm crying I would just wake up it's like I cried myself either to sleep or knocked out and then, and then I would wake up and I'm still crying and um, so I would just leave the door alone because it was such a pain for me to go there and in this year in about about three or so months ago or two months ago I had I had a vision I was sitting in my living room and I had a I wasn't sleeping and I had this very vivid visual of myself peeking at me from around the corner at the side of the house where I'm living now and it's like I heard God's voice said to me saying to me she's coming back I was so excited I was like oh my gosh it was so real I called my friend Athia and I'm like oh my gosh I just had a vision I'm coming back and I said to her I felt something in 2016, before the tragedy happened, 
I was driving on the highway or the boulevard to my home when I felt like a light just came right into my chest. And when that happened, for the first time I felt content. I felt happy. There was a freedom I felt when the thing came inside me. It was like a, it was like, maybe it was the Holy Spirit, I don't know. But I felt instantly overjoyed. Not in a, oh my gosh, I'm happy kind of way, but in an internal, at peace, content kind of way. And, and that was God calming me before, the, not calming me before the storm, but preparing me for the storm that was about to come and letting me know that I could take it. Because when the storm did come, <laughs> it's the stillest I was ever, I had ever been to the degree that for the next two years I would be still too. I'd be home, just still. I didn't want to talk. I didn't want to go anywhere. I didn't want to drive. I didn't want to do anything. I couldn't leave my home. All I did was study God, myself, and digital. <laughs> Everything online because I needed to learn how do I survive online. There was no COVID at the time. I just feared the outdoors so badly that I started scheming my security. I started scheming how do I build a system around myself where I do not have to leave my home in order to earn live a good life, have things to do that occupied my time and still be well. And so I'm talking about self-care. And in the last couple of days, I got back to who I was back in 2007 or before, before my 2016 experience where I, I used to love to cook for myself, I love recipes. I usually have like folders a folder full of recipes in my home before 2016 and about two months ago I got myself a machine to walk <laughs> no not not two months ago I planned I made a budget to get the machine I wanted to walk and I made a <laughs> I made a budget because I needed food, um, vegetables and fruits in my refrigerator and it was a prayer budget it wasn't a money budget it was a God I'm asking for these things I don't remember one day I just, I was praying for so long about it. I'm like, God, it's time. And I gave him a number. <laughs> ah. And he provided it. And even after he provided it, I thought, oh my God, this is good for business. I forget why I asked for it. And so he started creating breakdowns in my business that redirected me back to self-care. That he gave me that for self-care to restore the girl that had come back and so I started cooking like I used to and taking pictures of it because I love to and <laughs> I'm now gaining the gift of self-care one day at a time so to to find my peace I had to gain understanding forgiveness for others and myself and especially myself and then what was the third one First one was understanding, second forgiveness, third self-love, and the fourth is self-care. And this final one, my God, I love you, Father. The final one, my loves, that I had to, I had to gain ah, was my own personal understanding and knowledge of God. Oh, glory to God. Whew. Yes, God. When I was about 16, I started wearing a t-shirt called a rebel because I felt suffocated in the church. I couldn't ask a question. I couldn't, there was so much I didn't understand that didn't make sense to me, but there was nowhere to go with it because whenever I tried asking, I'd be shut down. And I learned from early, of course, that asking questions will get you hated, will get you slapped, will get you disliked, will get you, will make other people frustrated with you. But then, God made me a coach. So when I was younger, I was asking upwards of a hundred questions to people. Thank God for my dad because he never complained. <laughs> Whew. I had to learn to know God. I had to gain a personal knowledge and experience and understanding of God for myself. Because you see, I was praying to the God that, I was praying to other people's gods. 
other people's versions of him, other people's understanding of him, other people's practice of him. And they're okay doing so because we're supposed to personalize him. That we're, we're supposed to um, cultivate a personal relationship with him. And I'm beginning to feel woozy, so I'm going to wrap this up. It's very important for you to learn God for yourself. Know the God of your own understanding. It's okay to listen to others. They're sent to help us too. But primarily, we ought to learn God for ourselves. So as I bring this to a close, I just want to remind you that for me, to gain peace, to find peace, I had to find I, I had to find five things. I had to gain five things. One, and sorry for the thing you're hearing in the back, it's just the machine. I'm on the treadmill, so that's what you're hearing. I hope it's not too annoying. Um, I'm trying to turn it back on because the other sound sounds so much better. Now that I turned, oh, it just sounds. Ah, there we go, there we go, wonderful. So I'm just saying thank you for listening and as I wrap this up, I just wanna say, Finding your peace is important, and when you find it, you need to protect it, right? Because it's your peace that's going to help you to trust the process. So find your peace and trust your process is the topic this morning. Um, what I'm trying to say is for me to find my peace before I could protect it and before I could really truly trust the process to find my peace, I had to gain understanding. Sorry, I had to gain understanding. I had to gain forgiveness of self. I had to gain self-love, I had to gain self-care, and I have had to gain my own understanding, my own knowledge, my own relationship with God, me and God relationship, right? I had to personalize and customize it for us, right? So that I would know what, what to listen to and what to not listen to and, and, how to, and, and what I should allow to influence me or not. So today, I just want you to know that you are doing your best and it's okay where you are. Do not rush the process. Take your time. That's one of the things I've also gained, the art of slowing down, the art of patience. Oh gosh, I'm going to number six. Patience. And patience come under self-care, you know. It really comes under self-care. Patience with you. Be patient with yourself. Patience with others. Yeah, I wasn't patient with me, so I wasn't patient with anybody else because my life was always on the line for me. So I could not, oh my gosh, I, I don't know how I'm still here. The anxiety that I existed in for years. You've got to do this or you're going to be hungry. You've got to do this. You've got to, and, and even with me trying to hold all these eggs in one basket, it still fell and crashed. So God was just trying to show me that, hey, I got you. I've got you. Stop trying to carry you while I'm trying to carry you. You're creating a mess. So be patient with yourself. That's a part of, of, of self-care. Being patient with yourself and, and taking things in paces and times. Even my walking, I'm not running. I'm not going to work out. Those are not things I like to do. But you know what I love to do? I love to walk. So I get something I can walk on. I made the sacrifice, you know, for me, just as I would for my business. So today I just want to, I just want to remind you that your peace is important. So find your peace and you can trust the process. It's okay. God He's got you. God's got you. I don't even want to call him he. The creator got you. Your maker, he's, it's got you. Remember, no matter what terms I use, trust the God of your own understanding. Consult God about this conversation I'm having with you. Let him guide you as to what part to, to, to take in and what part to, dis, to, to, to discard. You know, I just want to, and this is my testimony. I'm just sharing with you how I've overcome and how I've gotten to a place now where I have found my peace and I'm protecting it with my life. In any circumstance I find myself, I will be content. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I'm not even going to want. See? I'm not, I'm not not wanting because he's my shepherd. I will not want because he's my shepherd. So I won't, even, I won't even allow myself to cultivate that feeling, that desire of want. Because I know. Find your peace. Trust the process. Thank you so much for listening to Finding Happy. I'm Coach Raquel. And if you want to learn more about me, you can go to walkingindivinepurpose.com or you can go to my other website, which is mycoachministry.com. If you want to listen to some positive entertainment, the music and just chill, you know, clean music that's uninterrupted, um, 
and, and has no none of the things. And, and when I say clean music, I'm not talking about Christian. I'm talking about positive, motivating, positive entertainment is what I'm talking about. Then you can go to umeradio.com. That's the, that's the letter U, M-E-R-A-D-I-O dot com. Right? And be inspired. You are so loved. Find your peace. Trust the process. Thank you for listening. Have a great day. Goodbye.